Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Time to Rules Campaign 1. This is episode 39, and uh, we have a lot to get into in a short amount of time. Uh, I'm going to give you a little disclaimer now. A few of my friends, my lovely players, are uh, drunk. <laughs> uh, specifically, Austin. Luckily, all he says is beep, so hopefully that works out well. It's whatever. But anyways, we we have a lot to get into, a lot of lore stuff to get into, and hopefully we'll be able to move on and see where uh, all this takes us. Um, that's going to do it. If you want to check us out on our podcasting formats, uh, literally any podcasting format out there we're on now, now that we're on Apple Podcasts. So your preferred podcasting, uh, you can check us out on your preferred podcasting format. Pretty neat. <sighs> Anyways, if you want to check out this, www.timedroll.com, there is a uh, sale going on until the end of, I think it's the end of May. It could be the beginning of June. I'd have to double check, but you'll where you get 15% off your entire order uh, at checkout. So if you want to go check that out, that'd be great. Anyways, I think that does it. I'm, okay, we'll see where this goes. All right. I see those shit eating grins. Look at them. You see them? I see them. <laughs> Only if you make it that way. <laughs> Is it chloral gay? No, Todd. No, we're not doing this. How do you know you're, how do you know you're not gay, though? Have you ever? Well, I, I think you just like try it out one time, and then you're like, "Yeah, I'm not gay." We're gonna we're gonna sit and we're gonna wait until they get out of their system. Here we go. If you didn't enjoy eighth grade band camp, you might be a heterosexual. <laughs> Everyone's had a drumstick up there. All right. <laughs> Why? Now, are you talking the are you talking the instrument piece or the uh, chicken or leg? The oh, I'm talking the instrument yeah. piece. But I mean, don't put raw meat in your vagina. I mean, that's what most people do. What about your butt? Salmonella. <laughs> Some people put raw meat in the vagina. <laughs> Not the salmonella in the vagina. If you don't wrap your sausage first, you're not going in. So if I put a condom around like a drumstick, like a chicken, I'll be okay. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Guys. It depends on if you're trying to avoid the grease or not. <clears throat> I kind of want more grease. No. Go out and keep it off. Okay. My, my lovely friends. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll let you know how that goes next week. God, God, God Whoever, is speaking. Who, you do your recap. I'm going to get a fourth glass, baby. Whoever brings up shoving something up a vagina in this session takes 4d10 Psychic damage. What about, a, what about ass? Is that is ass allowed? That? Shoving anything up anywhere, unless it's about, in an RP situation, down? you will take four d ten psychic <laughs> damage, and that now is you my just warning. Yourself up. You just opened yourself up for all kinds of trouble. <laughs> I, just, I just shoved a bunch of food in my mouth. I don't know. I was. I put a whole bag of jelly beans <laughs> up my ass. Don't put anything <laughs> in any orifice ever. You know, that family size. Alara takes uh, <laughs> 21 points of psychic damage. Mark that down for me, please. Thank you. Oh my Actually, god. I you just know what? snorted wine. Does that count? No. <laughs> Wait, wait, why the fuck was the wine by your nose? Did the wine enjoy it? (laughs) Why were you snorting wine? Austin, go make your drink. Actually, don't make a drink. No, I'm making my drink. Fuck you. I'll be back. Grab a glass of water on your way back as well. All right. Uh, Okay. Now that's hopefully past us, right? Right. I don't know. Has it ever passed? (laughs) Oh, I'm really bad. I'm gonna try that chicken thing. Okay. So, if anybody's interested in merch, uh, nice sweatshirt here that. Uh... I dropped the D10. <laughs> Anyways, let's get let's get into the recap because we got little time, much stuff. 
So if you sit on the D10, you may have to do damage against yourself. Thaddeus takes 31 points of psychic damage. And Thaddeus is dead. I'm kidding. That didn't count. Um, How are you dead? I don't we should be. We just had a long rest. Healed. You guys, okay. Let's get into the recap before the most drunk out of all, the, all of us gets back. <laughs> um, last we left off, you guys were escorted. Uh, well, found you found your way into the city of peace, uh, Artemis, uh, surrounded by blue dragons, and the city rightfully and well, not rightfully, but uh, pretty liberally destroyed uh, as, as you flew over you found yourself in combat with a mysterious uh, dragon scaled wearing uh, combatant um, where you fucked him up we'll just put it that way pretty lightly uh, uh, all of you took damage during the battle and then you found a sanctuary within the Royal Library upon the request of Rosalor Hillish, uh, Leon's personal assistant and apprentice. Uh, you found your way down into what can only be described as a cellar or a bunker that is underneath the Royal Library. Um, there you found a unconscious, seemingly not aware Leon, um, and this is also where you found a missing missing a limb, um, but still uh, prideful in spirit, the king of all of Sylvania, King Xavier, um, and also the queen of Sylvania, Queen Shira. Um, that is where all of you were praised for your efforts in... Uh, making it as far as you did. And that's also where the king humbly requested uh, your help in figuring out and solving the matters at hand. Uh, you, all, you all were asked, and given the options between multiple um, quests to go on, the one that all of you decided on was to find a find and discover a basically a folk a folk tale a uh, a cordeorum a gem that is said to bring back bring people back from the brinks of death and sometimes even save them from death a gem that is said to heal all wounds and cure all diseases uh the king stated that chances of you finding one are slim however uh you were given the giving given full access to the royal library's tomes and uh, with help from Rosalor, um, you were told that you could take as much time as you need to prepare and figure out where to go next. Um, upon completing this quest, you all all of you were also told that you would be all all be receiving a mighty sum of gold as well as a keep a castle of sorts uh, that can be built anywhere within Sylvanian lands upon completion of the quest, as well as noble titles and lordship over the land that your new keep would sit. Um, that is if you succeed in this task. Um, all of you prepared your stuff. Ori, um, Nate, you weren't here. Uh, I rolled randomly and had Ori go and to somewhat scratch the itch he has for battle. I had him go up and fight a dragon. Um, a younger one. Uh, he did not kill it, um, but but Ori came back battle scarred and seemingly tired and s semi okay with the situation. Um, but that is where we left off. Ori walking in to the bedroom to sleep off his battle wounds as all of you are waking up and preparing to go up into the library to start searching for any tomes that could pertain to this Corday arm. <clears throat> I have music up, I do. Cool. Sure, we'll go with... I know there's one that's called, like, Optimism. <laughs> How about this one? Yeah, Sadness. That sounds good. 
Nah, we'll go with uh... eh, There you go. <clears throat> so, Ori, you are currently sleeping. It is up to you if you want to take a short rest or a long rest. I let the dice do the rolling for you since you weren't here last time. Um, so if you want to take a short rest to cure, cure some wounds, you can. Or if you want to sleep for the better part of the day while all of your friends start to search, you can do that as well. Um, I'm going to need all of you who are going to be searching um, to... Well, I guess I need to figure out... Uh, we need to figure out who all is going to be searching for what and uh, how you're going to be searching for it. So if we, if all of you want to go up to the t you know, up into the library, that's good. Or if there's anything else any of you want to do in the meantime, um, while everyone else is searching, you can do that as well. Go to sleep. Okay. I'm, I'm smart. I'll help look. Okay. Yeah, I will also help look um, until closer to bedtime when I will, assuming we're staying for another night, go ahead and dump all my healing spells into um, various peoples. Okay. Um, well, then... For the sake of this, you, if you remember correctly, you did, uh, you did dump uh, quite a few, uh, cure wounds into people uh, and other, other healing, like lesser restoration and whatever was needed for the situation. Um, you gave me the amount of spell slots you wanted to use. Uh, for this case, you kind of look around and the people that are in the sick ward and the, in the, what seems to be some sort of steeple or chapel, um, there's not a lot of people down here that you can really help anymore. Uh, any wounds that need to be tended to have been tended to by the few clerics that are on hand. Um, however, if you remember correctly, up in the main main lobby of the uh, or in the main area of the library, which is now vastly transformed um, because of Leon's state, uh, you did see quite a few townspeople that were injured up there. So you would be able to go up there and start looking around. Yeah. I mean, I, I just basically want to, as long as we are here and not leaving this day, um, dump my magical resources into either healing or, um, like good berries and create water to kind of help provisions. Okay. Help stock up on provisions. E easy enough. Uh, just uh, in this case, in this going forward, if we're ever in this type of situation again, where it's more of a downtime searching for stuff, uh, if anybody ever wants to do any more, uh, we'll call it utility based magic, where it's either healing or um, creating food, creating water, you name it, that type of thing. Uh, just let me know how many spell slots you want to burn. Um or tell me how many spell slots you want to keep, and then I'll just assume the other ones will be used that day for whatever whatever you deem necessary. Okay, so in that case, I will pretty much only keep... Assuming, again, that we're staying the night here, um, I'm only going to keep two level three spells, and I will burn the rest. Okay, sounds good. Um, so yeah, you all... Anybody who already remaining sleeping, um, uh, all of you do make your way. Uh, Lara, are you going to hang out with or are you going to hang out with uh, Alka? You think? You're muted. I don't know if Lexi is here. I'm going to assume Alara would be with Alka. We'll just assume that for now. And if Alara wants to come back down, she can. I was muted oh. the whole time. I was talking like a dumbass. Um, I was going to say, because at first I said I was sleeping with Ori, because I was going to be on his head. So I'll just be like with him. Okay. Sounds good. So Ori, well, you did. Uh, so reminder, you weren't necessarily, you were listening last, uh, last time. Um, Ori had put you down and given you to Elka and you had spent the night with Elka. Because Ori was out fighting a dragon because he was frustrated that he hadn't killed anything recently. And I random rolled for that. Um, so you can certainly walk into the bedchamber that Ori is currently slumped over with his head on the, on a pillow. 
uh, leaning against the bed because he's too large to lay in the bed. You could certainly kind of like go in there and hang out with him and watch him sleep or even take another nap with him. You could do that if you want. Um, but, you know, if you want to do other things other than watch your best buddy sleep, then <laughs> it's up to you. I'll go with Elka then. Okay. All right, that's fine. So all of you do make your way up into the library, and uh, now that you're getting a better look at the library, you realize that not only has the library fundamentally changed, it's grown rooms that never existed in the first place. There's items that you didn't even see the last time you're here. The last time you're in this library, as I described last, last session, it was just a large, basically like a government building, large marble halls with books stacked to, stacked to the ceiling. Um, and not many, some side rooms, uh, including like Leon's office and the teleportation room that he had. You currently don't see any of those rooms here. Can you drag me? I you won't let me. Yes. So now that we're all in here, you can... Uh... And Rosler would be following up behind you. Rosler would would, uh, would uh, force the water, control water, to drain down or drain upwards into a little magical ball uh, as you walk up uh, the hidden staircase. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll grab uh, Ander. That's right, Ander. After Ori had walked back covered in blood, Ander had charged out into the streets. Seemingly to go fight dragons. So Ander is nowhere to be seen. Um, so. Yeah, let me grab. Thaddeus. Because I don't know why you can't drag yourself. It's always it's just so weird to me. Um, and then. And then who else do we care? Valera would be hanging out. Um, and then, uh, Austin, what would Beep be doing? Uh, he'd probably just be generally hanging out, too. Okay, yeah, just ca casually looking at books. And then, um, since you were gone, I, I did send, um, uh, b -b 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 why am I blinking on your boy's name? Clovis. I sent Clovis back to his own dimension. All good. Uh, so he isn't here right now. If you want to summon him again, you can. Um, and since you had already used the components that you bought prior, he's just kind of hanging out in his own little home pocket dimension. You could summon him whenever you want. The only time that that changes is if he uh, quote unquote dies is when his HP hits zero. Then you have okay. to then you'll have to resummon and use the uh, spell components that are in that spell. All right. Um. Okay. I'll take it. So, uh, Clovis will kind of, like, look at all of you. Well, since we're... S or, so sorry, not Clovis. Uh, Rosalor, <laughs> sorry. I'm looking I'm looking at Clovis's uh, character sheet right now. Uh, Rosalor will look at all of you. Say, well, there's not many places, uh, or not many tomes on this matter, but if you honestly just search anything for... Uh, search for anything pertaining to Dwarven um, marvels, like makes, weapons, jewelry, um, anything, any of the history on dwarves. We should have some books on that. Anything that could pertain to potentially where these... Uh, I mean, any anything to do with folklore on these gems, because technically... Officially, they're, they maybe existed, but they haven't been seen, certainly not in Sylvania since prior to, well, easily a couple of centuries. So, um, I'd say now that you've been gained, you've been given access by the king, let me, and he'll like wave his hands and you'll see like this golden uh, golden bit of magic come out of his hands. And all of you will feel a warm embrace around you. That should cover you throughout the library. If anything 
say comes to life or tries to attack you or starts to move and talk to you, that bit of magic around you should protect you and should notify anything that does try to bother you that you are welcomed. Um, I'm going to say Vaten, you just notice it with uh, looking across into, in, into this area and up into here and over into here, you do see people, townspeople, stacked in there. It's 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 there's quite a few people in here. I just don't have tokens for them because it'd be littering this map and it'd lag like crazy. Um, but you see women, children, uh, you see dogs, pets, um, all just kind of gathered up and f using up whatever space they can to shelter down for whatever comes next. Uh, with your passive perception, you do see a faint gold glow around every single person you look at. Similar to the okay. one that was just placed upon you. Noted. Um, but if if you want to go start curing people, you can do that, Vaten. Um, as for Razalor, he'll look at all of you. I'm gonna go look in the restricted section um all of you are welcome to follow me but it's uh it's not a fun place to be in if you don't know where you're going this one will not follow I will search for any old tomes that we have about this these items for now if y'all want to look about on the bookcases and just uh, start searching for generic things about Dwarven society, or even if you find anything that's pertaining to gemcraft uh, from the dwarves, that'd be great. Um, more knowledge, the better, even if it's not necessarily um, uh, needed for the situation. And you'll see him kind of like walk back Towards, uh, towards this ladder. Not this ladder, but these stairs. And then he'll disappear off into this room somewhere. So, library's yours. Um, you can certainly use it for other, other forms of knowledge if you'd like. Um, but you have full access. So, if you're... Uh, looking for anything in particular for a personal reason we can get to that in a minute as for uh what as for anything else um what is there anything in particular that you guys are going to look for um i'll look for like dwarven folklore books okay uh roll uh roll an investigation check um with advantage the glow that you have that was that was brought upon you you feel a surge of almost like a surge of uh of knowingness of knowledge that you didn't have prior while you're looking at these books it's almost like you're familiar with these books even though you've never seen them before 21 21 it takes you a little time quite large the the map doesn't really give it for scale the room that all of you are standing in with the trees and the grass the ceiling is probably 150 feet tall. Um, the room you're currently in, the ceilings are actually kind of low um, comparatively. They're about 30 feet tall. And you have bookcases that go straight up and there's a pool behind you, uh, Zane. Um, as you look around, you do find, with a 21, you do find a book on... Uh, labeled it. It's in Dwarvish. Do you read Dwarvish? Nope. Okay. Let me find my PDF. There we go. Had it on the wrong tab. Okay, you do find a book in Dwarvish that you do recognize one word uh, in Dwarvish because it, uh, it's a standard. It's standard knowledge and is the is the word for dwarf <laughs> in Dwarvish <laughs> because its spelling is pretty similar. Um, you grab it, and the entire book, as you open it, the entire book is written in Dwarvish. 
I'll take you with anyway, just in case. Okay. I do speak Dwarvish. Okay. Language. Um, I'm going to use this big keyboard in front of me and Google Dwarvish books <laughs> in the library. Okay, so you're using the, the book registry that's at um, the front desk. <laughs> Oh, I was actually looking at the rug that looks like a big keyboard. <laughs> oh, yeah. You um, you walk up to the front desk and there is a giant book in the center that does look like a, a registry of some sort. Yeah, I'm going to flip through the uh, registry and look for any marks or spots where it has dwarvish ruins books or dwarf would lead me in a better direction. Gotcha. Okay. Like a uh, Dewey Decimal System. Make an investigation check with uh with advantage. Investigation with advantage. Can I make perception instead? You're so perception is used for glancing around a room. Investigation is really digging in and trying to find something. So it's gonna have to be investigation. Eight on the investigation doesn't necessarily help you, um, but you do search through the registry and luckily enough, the the registry is fairly detailed. Um, you do notice handwriting of different people all throughout it. Um, you do stumble upon and it's written in common. Uh, uh, you do find a section um, that is specifically on history books that's within the library. Um, you don't find anything specific for dwarven, but you do find you do find you do find a section for just history. If you'd like to go and check that out, and to show tell you where it is, you get the sense even with your bad investigation check, as you find it and you put your finger on that area, you immediately know in your brain where in the library it is. It's almost as if you're starting to, it's almost as if you had been there, you had been here before in a past life. It's just that kind of feeling where it's like, oh crap, I know where this is. And I will start heading in that direction. Okay. Uh, where that direction is, is over to, it would be direct right uh, from where Thaddeus is, and I will mark it, uh, ping it on the map. It's somewhere over in this area. I walk straight through there, or do I have to? Uh, you can certainly check it out. <laughs> um, you look at the, you look at the rooms, and these, uh, the room you're in currently is also quite tall, lower, uh, lower in ceiling than the middle room where the pool is and the uh, the trees are. Um, but each each of these rooms are very tall. You walk in, there is no other door leading to where it looks like. So yeah, you'd have to go up and then around, and then you'd be able to find your way into that section. Um, you do happen to you kind of like trying to step over families as you're doing this as well, because reminder, the entire entirety of the main area of the library is filled with refugees. Um, More keyboards up here. <laughs> How the hell do I get in here? Um, Elka, we'll get to Elka because Elka's already over here. Um, Elka, you would have, with your higher perception, you, which your perception is fairly high, yeah. Uh, my passive is fourteen. Okay, that's good enough. What's your status? My perception. Your passive perception. Passive. Uh, where is it on the sheet? Right below your, um, ability, not ability scores, the, uh, different checks that you can make. Oh, passive perception's 14. 14, same as Elka's. Elka, you were able to see with your passive perception, and Thaddeus, you just noticed it as well. Right here at this door, or at this door, at this, uh, wall... You put your hand on it, and you see a little bit of an illusion, almost like a wave. And you put your hand on it, and your hand slips through. And you're able to walk through. And you are now... And now you see Elka looking looking through... Lar jumping up, looking at other books. 
the room you're in currently, it is just as tall as the center room. And each wall is just filled. Thousands of books. Um, Lady Elka, I looked at the registry and it directed me towards this room. Just to let you know. There's a registry? Up there by the very front where we came in the room of, of grass. If you go just south of that, there's a, a large um, a large book. That... Huh. Well, I'm just looking at titles. Okay. Um, Thaddeus and Elka both roll investigation checks with advantage. Again, now that Thaddeus, now that you're looking for books and looking for specific things on Dwarven books, you can start to narrow it down. Elka, you can roll with advantage as well. 11. 16. Thaddeus, we'll get to you in a second. 11. Is there anything? So you're just looking. I was looking for, uh, you said like gemstones or whatever. Any, kind of books. Anything particular in gemstones. Okay, within 11, it's a big bookshelf. <laughs> Um, it takes you the better part of half an hour to find anything that is pertaining to anything gemstone related, but you do find a book on how to properly cut gemstones. Um, maybe not the book you're looking for, but it is, a, it is something pertaining to what you're searching. Um, Thaddeus with a 16, it doesn't take you long. Um, in you knowing Dwarvish, you immediately find a book on uh, on Dwarvish history that's labeled The Tale of the Five Dwarven Lords. Can I reach it? Yeah, it's right in front of you. Um, as So, funny enough, you go to reach for this book, and as you go to reach for it, it ju shoots out of the... Uh, bookshelf right into your hand. Whoa! Um, Lady Elko, this book just jumped out in my hand. This whole place is pretty magical, so that's not gonna... too unordinary. It's about dwarven history. I'm gonna put it on the table right here. Okay. And it, open it up. So fun, as, as you go to look at this book, it is a leather bound book and it seems to have a, what looks like a leather strap sealed lock on it. Um, as you look at it, it looks like a standard lock that maybe someone will put on, like say a diary. Um, uh, I'm going to investigate the lock. Okay. Roll an investigation check. Just a normal one for this type of investigation. Natural Whoa. 20. You look at this lock. It is very clearly trapped. Magically. And it is very clearly magically locked. All right. Uh, this is magically locked. I'm going to take it out to the main room and have uh, somebody else look at it as well. Okay, I'm going to keep looking around here. Okay. Right. I'm going to take the book back this way. Excuse me, sorry. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh <laughs> my god, what happened to your head? In the meantime, before we get to another, uh, any other searching for anybody else, Vatan, you're going around healing people. Um, you said you wanted to keep up to three, or up to two, three level spell slots, right? You're muted, buddy. My bad. I would keep uh, two third level spell slots. Two third level spell uh, slots. Okay. But I would probably hold off until closer to the evening to bedtime, unless I see somebody that's gonna like literally kick the bucket. Okay. Between um, now and then. So. Let me. Hold on. I'm pulling up your character sheet just so I know how many spell slots you do have. Um. Uh, um... While I'm returning, I am looking for Vatan, and if I see him, I will... Uh, you... ah, ah. 12 spell slots. Okay. Um, 
but I would definitely keep um, at least two of the third level um, for emergency okay. purposes. Sounds sounds good. Okay. Um, unless, uh, Vatan, if you're waiting... Uh, actually, you know what? Roll a d10 for me. Ooh. Two. Okay. Uh, you look around. No one actually seems to be that... Um... You look in just a standard glance around with your crazy high perception. Um, no one seems to be on death's door, but there are people that are injured. Uh, stuff like lacerations. You do see one guy that seems to be holding a gauze over what seems to be an arm that has that no longer has a hand. Um, and it's um, it seems to be finally wrapped and, and intended to. But you do see blood coming from the soak through the bandage. That that guy, I would probably drop a, you know, level one, level two, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Into. Yeah. Just say he orcish fella, um, maybe half orc, just depending on. Definitely more orcish on, on in his genes. Um, uh, big old tusks on him. Uh, bigger, bigger dude, probably seven, eight feet tall. Um, you walk up and you put your hand on him to on his on his arm and you go to heal him and he's just like. Thanks. Just really hoarse, hard to speak, and as you as you heal him, all of a sudden his you re he reveals takes the gauze off and he reveals that in fact he did lose his entire right hand, um, but he now has a sealed off nub that is no longer casually bleeding, so yep. he kind of puts this one wishes this he, one wishes he could do more. He puts, uh, he looks at you with kind of like a, um, a soft look. Uh, it seems to be an older gentleman. Maybe not like grandpa level, but definitely like probably pushing 50 or 60 years old. He just looks up at you with kind of softer eyes. Um, and he kind of just puts, puts his hand on your shoulder and just nods his head. Thanks. Just nod and walk away. Okay. I'll just say you mark off a level one spell for that. A level one? Yeah. Um, closing off wounds is not that hard to do with a cure with a level one cure of wounds. Uh, things that are more internal bleed bleeding tend to be more of a, uh, for RP purposes, or tend to be more of a, a necessity for higher level spells. But um, that are, you know, full on missing limbs and stuff. Uh, <laughs> but. Well, yeah, but I don't have the spell for that, so that would be like a Great. regeneration. Regener or something. Regeneration would probably be the spell. Yeah, that's what seventh level, I think. Uh, yeah. I know it's at least fifth. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> mm, fair enough. Um, but you walk back and you see Thaddeus coming in uh, with a book in his hand that seems to be locked. It's just a standard leather, a darker leather book. Um, do you read Dwarvish? I do not. Okay. You would see a bunch of words on the on the front of the book that mean absolutely nothing to you. <laughs> but Nikki one, is there a reason you carry that book? Yes, yes. Um actually you I was I was looking for you. Um it's dwarvish, it's history of dwarves. Uh it's about five different regions or something and it is magically locked and it is also trapped this one will see what he can do and I will go ahead and cast a third level uh, dispel magic on it uh, roll a d20 and add your spell mo your spell uh, uh, would be your wisdom modifier uh -huh. Ooh, that's rough. <laughs> Fifteen. Go to cast a spell magic on it. You feel your spell take hold 
of this lock and it fights with it for a minute. Um, 15 was the exact DC you needed to unlock this book. And as, as you dispel magic, it pops open. As it pops open, the book springs to life with teeth and starts starts coming at you, almost like a mimic. And as as you put your hand out to expand your, your dispel magic just a little bit more, it shuts completely and the teeth disappear. And the book lays there on the table in front of you. Okay. I'm, I'm going to pull out my dagger and kind of like touch the book with my dagger. So if it starts <laughs> teething, it will bite the dagger and not my nubs. Okay. Uh, so you look in the book. Uh, you're going to open the book then? Yes. It's standard paper. Standard parchment. Now, it's a fairly thin book. Now that you look at it. it's not more not a tome. It's more of a notebook. Um, now that the magic has been dispelled, and you see that the teeth that grew, you get the sense that maybe the teeth that grew had more to do with the thickness of the book than the actual contents of the book. Um, when you open it, there's only maybe ten pages inside this book. Um. Are you going to take time to read? It's all in Dwarvish as you read it. Are you going to take time to read that? Yeah, I'm going to. If it's only 10 pages, I'm going to scan. Okay. Um, I'm going to say make a general. Are you proficient in Dwarvish? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's there's a difference between knowing and being proficient. Um, okay. You read the book and it takes you about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Um, I have the full, full what the book says, uh, for you. Um, but I will give you the, I'll, I'll paraphrase and then I can send you the full details of the book. The book goes over the, uh, over the history as to how the five dwarven lords were put in place. You learn that the five dwarven lords originally stemmed from the first dwarven lords were five brothers. Uh, they were the... Trying to find the name of the brothers. Uh, they were the, they were known as the Nolik clan. N-O-L-L-I-C-K. Um, they were five, uh, five brothers, all were around the same age. Uh, they were master craftsmen and champions of the of Dwarven society uh, back po uh, pre-Fracture. Um, they crafted weapons and armor uh, and dug tunnels and fortresses uh, to defend against what is known as a, a sorcerer known as Malachar the Zealous. Um, these five brothers, along with uh, the, dwar the dwarven armies that they led, uh, fought against the hordes of vicious monsters that Malachar summoned uh, and uh, won a decisive battle um, about 400 years prior to the fracture uh, that would eventually bring the five brothers uh, into mass fame throughout the Dwarven communities and the people of, of Dwarven society deemed them champions. Um, more than champions in a way that uh, a king would deem them, but eternal champions. Uh, all five claimed, uh, claimed their deeds were the reason for winning the battle against Malachar. Um, and eventually all of them were deemed, were given a title known as a Tiger Non Mora, which translates into the great, which translates to, you would know, uh, great, great lords uh, from co common to Dwarvish. Um, these five brothers were given a domain to rule and each of them took up uh, homes in, in one of each of the five great Dwarven keeps. Which you would know about, uh, because one is fairly close to your to where you grew up, um, and that is how the five great dwarven lords eventually would become who they are, uh, being given these titles and be given these keeps and these fortresses to take care of and and rule over. Um, roll history check for me, Thaddeus. History. 
22. You would know um, that the closest, you would know that the closest Dwarven Keep to you currently and the closest one, and the one that you grew up kind of close to, and you knew that in you knew that your father had relations with certain dwarves from this mountain region, but they are the dwarves of Arendur, um, and you would know that the the current the current ruler of Arendur is unknown, but you would also know that it's not just one ruler anymore in Arendur. You would know that it's an oligarchy ruled by a group of individuals that span from master craftsmen to warriors to gem crafters to all sort to religious leaders. Um, being that you've never been within the halls of Arendur, you don't necessarily know who they are um, or, or the real or really even their names, but you do know if recalling with a 22 you do recall that the last name of one of the dwarves that used to come to your father's your your childhood home, uh, you do kind of remember that his last name started with an N. Uh, but can't really remember exactly what his last name was, but you do remember his first name, and you do remember that his first name was Morin. He's a older dwarvish gentleman grayish beard um shorter on the shorter side for a dwarf and uh seemed to have a really big beer belly um but he was always nice to you whenever he came to your home okay and his last name started with an n would since i read the last name of the five would that have jarred anything Potentially being the same. Potentially knowing that he was a higher higher up in Dwarven society from Aaron Dor, you could maybe guess that maybe his last name was Nolik. Um, but all you know is that his first name is Morin, and you remember that maybe his last name started with an N, so there's a potential there. Um You would also know that this man is probably this dwarf is getting up there in age. So this being that this was you know, a good 15 years ago, recalling these memories, you have no idea of a dwarf that old uh, would have kicked the bucket by now or is still alive and well. Okay. Um, going back to Zane, um, since we, we haven't touched on you there. So you did find a standard of folklore book on Dwarvish society that is in Dwarvish. Um, is there anything else you want to search in this section of the library? Um, no. Nope, I'll just return to my friends. Okay. So you bring the book back, and it's very clearly in Dwarvish. Um... You could, br you don't, I don't think you're aware that Thaddeus knows how, knows how to read Dwarvish. Um, but you bring it back and you do recognize the na a name on it. That is Dwarf. Dwarvish for Dwarf. That's all you know. I found a book. I cannot read it. Thaddeus is not here. He currently walked away from his chair. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's the only person in this party that knows how to read Dorvish. This one does not read that language either. Mm. Um, I'd say while we're waiting, Elka, is there anything else you want to look for while you're there? Knowing that uh, the section of the library that Thaddeus just looked in was more of a history side... And knowing that you're kind of looking, you start to get the sense that the area that you're looking is is more of a um, a general skills like a like a how to books, mostly um, spell crafting, I mean, gem crafting, you name it, it's all there. I'd probably head over to where Thaddeus was looking and see if there's any history books written in common about dwarves. Okay, uh, roll another investigation check with advantage. Twelve. Twelve. 
takes you another 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, the sheer amount of books that, that are in this library is astounding. Um, you look around, you do find a few History of Amriel books that are similar to ones that you have seen before. Uh, you do find uh, History of the, of the Royal Line in Sylvania. Um, which kind of piques your interest because you just met the king type of deal. But, I mean, if you wanted to grab that, you could. Um, Now's not the time for more books. Yeah. <laughs> I have enough light reading material. I, I can provide them. Chat GPT is my favorite thing right now. <laughs> it's writing so many books for me. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, general history for dwarves that you do find... Um, more history on what is known as a it looks to be a book written in common about the dwarves of the fracture and how uh and kind of, it's literally named the dwarves of the fracture so that kind of piques your interest it's the only real real book just fortunately you're not rolling that great with investigation uh that you can really find uh you do get the sense that if you took many hours to search and find you'd be able to find things you're looking for but as of right now for just a quick glance general looking around that's really the only one you can find okay um okay so thaddeus you walked away to i assume grab more wine um uh Zane brought up a book, the book that he found that is in complete, that is an all dwarvish, uh, and asked if anybody knew how to read this. Oh, okay. But yes, I, I, I do read, believe it or not, dwarvish. Well, have at it. I can't tell a damn thing on this one. And then his mother touched him. No, uh, put that back. No, just kidding. <laughs> Let's I believe see. this book was titled The Lusty Argonian Maid. <laughs> Dwarvish Peggy. Lift okay. her tail. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Is there retcon something? Sure. Uh, before Ori sleeps, can he ask someone to find a book of mice and men too? <laughs> sure. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> You're trying to make that canon in this world, and I hate. I, I love you, and I already hate have. For I already have of mice in bed. One. It'd be funnier if, if like the canonical version in the world is of mice and minotaurs. <laughs> that would be better. <laughs> recon, recon, recon. That's the name of it. <laughs> um, You're welcome. But yes, that's no problem. Um, oh, yeah. Oddly and oddly enough, Russell comes walking out of the restricted section. I found it. Um, no, but oh. uh, the book that Zane brought over, uh, it's titled um, The Tales of Lilac the Bard, Volume 3, um, and is in Dwarvish. Uh, I'm going to say all of you make a history check. Oh. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Nat 20. Nice. <laughs> 28. <laughs> Nat 20. Hey, oh. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> what a great uh, rule. Okay. And since Elka's not here, she wouldn't see it yet. Um, okay. Uh, all of you wouldn't... Uh, all of you except for Beep, uh, which... Actually, you know, beep with a 10. It's just that general. You would recognize the name Lilac the Bard. Um, because it is a famous book. Uh, it is a famous set of books written by a bard that existed pre-fracture. Known as Lilac the Bard. She was an elvish woman who would go around and learn of folk tales. Of about different people, um, you know, would would go 
town to town, city to city, just trying to find anything that she can get her hands on about what's going on in rural areas and uh, good. Basically, she's just a per she was trying to write folk folk tales. Um, but you read it, Thaddeus, and all you read is the Tales of Lilac the Bard, Volume Three, and then underneath it, Dwarvish version. <laughs> so the the name dwarf that you recognize Zane was dwarfish version um but you do open the book and and it is a bunch of folk tales about various uh various uh happenstances across all of amriel uh stuff like the um uh you read one that's called helga the changeling and you kind of read into it and it's about a uh interesting fae uh, creature named a changeling that would go named Helga that would go around and uh, pretend to be other people to uh, scam uh, inheritances out of people. Um, you would read uh, about a um, uh, you would read another folk tale about a uh, the Lady of the Fountain, which is a uh, a folk tale that came from right here in Artemis about a a ghost lady that apparently drowned inside of, inside one of the main fountains uh, in City Square, and apparently she haunts it to this day. Um, in fact, you start to think, "Oh shit, that fountain is kind of close." And then you look outside. Oh wait, it might be gone now. Um, you find it. Go ahead. Anything referring. As I flip through the pages about a specific dwarves or a family of dwarves, or you do find a tale about a dwarven family. It's called, uh, um, sorry, let me see here. That this one, Brewery of Eggshells is the name of it. Um, it is a uh, it is a tale of a brewing a dwarvish brewing family uh from the hill from the uh, halls of arendor that traveled to artemis to open up a brewery um but given the uh the knowingness of 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 you thaddeus and knowing the history of of sylvania um you read that they were severely um severely harassed when they moved into artemis uh, this is prior to the fracture, uh, and you you would know that the um, the elvish hierarchy and the human hierarchy within Artemis didn't take kindly to anybody but humans and elves back then. And you would find you would read that the dwarven family suffered um, suffered some misdeeds from the populace, and you you would read that they found eggshells and eggs inside their brew that were put in there uh, to basically get them in trouble uh, and get their business shut down. You would eventually read that they had, that they gained pr enough proof to show that their neighbor, uh, a, a uh, competing brewery uh, brewer, he is an Elvish man, uh, hired a bunch of basically hoodlums, we'll call them uh, to, steal chicken eggs from local farms and then break them inside the barrels to basically uh, destroy their business. And uh, you would also read that eventually they were forgiven of any crimes, but they were forced to leave Artemis and you, there's no telling what happened to them after that. Family or the kids? The family. The family of dwarves were forced were forced out of Artemis. You start to read through some of these, um, some of these stories, and some of them are more innocent. But there is an undertone of anything that comes from Sylvania, specifically prior to the fracture. You get the sense that there's quite a lot of, without a lack lack of a better term, bigotry from ancient Sylvanian society. Um, a lot of, a lot of elvish and human superiority complexes. Uh, and you do see that somewhat to this day, uh, but not nearly in the way that it, as brutal as it was back then. 
So it hasn't changed much for me. But um, um, flipping through that book, there's not a whole lot of stories on specifically in that book that pertains to a lot of dwarves. There's a lot of things that, that happened within Sylvania, a lot of other uh, folk tales about uh, uh, there's a folk tale about a the, the lost fairy prince coming down from his uh, his uh, pearl castle that floats through the sky and taking up arms against evil and denying uh, denying that he was a fairy. Um, you I'm kind familiar. of you, you read that. Yeah, it's kind of kind of a familiar tale um, and kind of rings true. And you and you read the date and it is. 250 ish years prior to the fracture that that is dated. But it said yeah, that one took place within Sylvania. But yeah, unfortunately, it's there's with with even with the okay role from Zane finding the book, it's not only having one person know how to read Dwarvish is is a bit of a hindrance to the group at this moment. Um, it takes about 10, 15 minutes more. Elka, is there anything else you want to look for as you're over in that other room? Just continue looking for Dorvish history or. Yeah, I would just keep looking for that. I'm going to say roll another investigation check. We'll see it. We'll see if the, if the dice love you this time, do it with advantage. <laughs> Eighteen. Hey, there you go. You had to beat a fifteen. Uh, it takes you another 15, 20 minutes, um, just searching. But you do find a book on uh, on the establishment of Dwarven society prior to the fracture. And I'll take a look at it's it. It's all in common. Um, you you sift through it, and it's a it's a hodgepodge of stories that were taken you get the sense as you're reading anything, anything that has to do with prior to the fracture, you, you get, you're realizing that you're reading more hearsay and stories than you are actual facts. Um, you would know this because the fracture essentially destroyed all documentation prior, uh, prior to it happening. Uh, that was one of the main goals of, uh, of the gods that, w that wish to partake in the destruction of Amrael um, was the destruction of knowledge. and But you start to read through it and you read tales of folk tales of, of dwarves being born out of the mountains and spawning from the dirt and rocks themselves. Um, you read that they were created um, by the by the uh, union um where is i'm flipping through like seven pages of books so you have to give me a second <laughs> oh goodness gracious where is it uh you do read about how dwarves uh were created by the union of two gods uh that being the uh, the Peacebringer, Aldath, and uh, seriously, what the f is it? Uh, there it is. <laughs> Brain. There we go. Uh, the you read that dwarves were created by the uh, by the union of Eldath, the Peacebringer, and Gond, the Iron Father. Uh, it also immediately clicked in your brain that it's kind of funny, um, knowing uh, knowing the superior superiority complex. That goes on within Sylvania, um, specifically specifically among the nobles. You learned it's not the case with the king and queen, um, with them willingly talking to all of you. Um, it's kind of you realize it's kind of funny that those are the only two gods that are allowed that are allowed to legally be praised and worshipped within within Artemis limits, and you read that dwarves were created by. Potentially created by the union of those two deities. Um, you also read that the dwarves were once humans um, that were punished by Eldath, the Peacebringer, 
for being overzealous in their craftsmanship and uh, overzealous in their ability to uh, bend nature to their will. And they are punished for that, and they were cursed by her and sent into the mountains, and eventually the, them becoming dwarves was because of that curse. A um, lot of random hodgepodge stories that don't really make sense, and they're all just kind of guesses. Um, but nothing pertaining to the Corday Arum. Okay. I guess I'll just head back over to where everyone else is, see if they've made any okay. discoveries. Okay, and what are what are you doing, Thaddeus? You're... Can a couple of people come over here? This doesn't make sense. What does um, uh, what, um, what doesn't make sense? Meander my way over there. Yeah. The the walls. If you go down to here, and then there's a wall that that goes up, and then you go over here in the wall that goes up. There's there's a missing space. Am, am I? I think there's something behind this bookshelf. Possibly a hidden room. I haven't been in the sauce yet today. Can I try and move the bookcase for him? They're going to try to move the bookcase. Roll strength check. Mind you, you're in a room that is 150 feet tall, and this bookcase is every bit as tall as that. How is an 18? 18. You go to grab it. Even though you're strong. And you know you're strong. It's just too lumbersome of a book of a bookcase to to move. And you get the sense that it is, in fact, attached either attached to the ground or set in place magically. I think you're getting in here, buddy. If you want to look at it more, Thaddeus, you can roll an investigation check. And if you want someone to help you, you can get advantage. Yes, please. Or if someone has a better investigation that wants to roll, they can do that as well. Is somebody more keen in investigation than I? Um, Welcome to Dungeons & Dragons. Bingo. I'll we'll take a look oh, over it. Yes. I was going to say, I'm decent at investigation. Not great, though, by any stretch. Not terrible. 19. 19. It takes a little bit of time. Um, and so far, since you since Razalor has left you, uh, Vaten, given, given your, you being one of the only ones to not really be searching for anything or really, you're really just mm -hmm. kind of hanging out. Beep would also understand this. And Alara just kind of hanging out would kind of get the sense. Um, Razalor has been gone for about an hour and a half. And you have no idea where he went. Uh, and as you look at this, it takes you another 15 or so minutes. And eventually you grab a book, Zane. You grab it and it's above your head. And you're like, the reason why, why it gets your attention is that in Infernal, it says the history of all. And as you grab it, the book slides out and then you feel the bookcase shift and you can hear and you hear hinges open and it pushes in forward to a hidden room. And inside oh, you see a room. You find what you see on the map, a room filled with cobwebs, a uh, smaller room. This room is pro it doesn't make sense in your brain. Being in the in, in the room that you're in, uh, being 150 foot tall with a dome at the top. Um, of natural light seeping in. You walk into this room, and this room is no taller than eight feet tall. And it seems to be a forgotten study. Are you gonna just, oh, just going to walk in willy-nilly, Zane? Uh, I'll check for traps. Roll an investigation check. Matt 20. It's not trapped. <laughs> Um, you look. But you're still dead. Uh, you didn't see the disintegration oh. ray be, uh, rune on the wall. Shame. Um, no. Uh, 
you walk, it's just, it seems like an old study. Um, dust, cobwebs everywhere. Uh, you see small bookshelves with like, uh, seems to be handwritten books. Um, and you do find inside a, what seems to be a wardrobe or a chest. That is, you look at it, it does have a little padlock on it. Hmm. In before any, it, mimic. Is there any uh, dwarven looking books in here? Uh, there's a, there's roll. room for two of us. Are you just looking around or are you trying to like find to comb look? I'm combing through it. Okay. Um, roll another investigation check with advantage since it pertains to a bookshelf. Not terrible. 18. Okay. You find... Do you read Sylvan? I do. Okay. Every single book in here is written in Sylvan. And you do recognize the handwriting. And it is that of Leon. And every... you start to look, and none of these books are labeled. And as you look through them, they, these seem to be like journals. Kept by Leon, written in Sylvan. And some of these books, just glancing at them, and with that high, with a Nat 20 investigation, some of these books could be decades old, centuries old, maybe even older. You look at the parchment, and it's almost as if you touch it, and it starts to brittle away and crumble away. It's that old. Hmm. Well, I don't think we're going to find what we may be looking for in here. These seem to be personal. Yeah, and you, you read through them just glancing and reading in Sylvan. It's literally as if he's ta day by day just writing about random things. Um, you do glance in and there is one about uh, missing home and missing his parents. Uh, and this is one of the older books. And you get the sense this book is probably pushing a thousand years old. Just with your crazy high intel uh, investigation check. Um, and you start to gain the scope of how old this man is. Uh, but there is also a, I mean, you look through the only thing that's the outlier is that wardrobe chest with a padlock. Okay. I'll check it for traps. Roll another investigation check. 18, 18 doesn't seem trapped. I'll attempt to open it. Roll with a uh, you have thieves tools. I sure do. That's right. Roll thief still check. Uh, nineteen. It takes some finagling. Um, and takes you a little longer than you, a tougher lock than you than you expected. You feel your lock pick about to break, but you're able to readjust, and as you get it just right, you feel like you're about to unlock it. The padlock falls off. Unlocked. Make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, that's a... 16. 16. Even with... Even with a fairly high investigation check on checking for traps... You did not see the glyph that was invisible glyph that was on the side of the wall, and you see it glow as uh, as you go to open up this chest. Um, since you're the only one in the room, uh, you take and with a 16, which is a failed dexterity saving throw, 
you feel a beam of nauseous energy come shooting out at you. And it, it is almost cold to the touch, but it's not, it doesn't feel like ice. And you take 14, 15, uh, 25 points of force damage as you are launched by this glyph away from this, uh, this chest. You're launched, oh. you're, you're launched 10 feet away. So you're basically launched out the door. <laughs> all of you just see, all of you just hear him go, yes, got it. And you hear the lock hit the ground. And as you hear, see him go to lift, you just hear, oh shit. And you see a, like a, just a blur of Zane come ripping by you. Medical. Medical. <laughs> I'll walk over there. What the hell happened? I've had worse days in my life. <laughs> All of you see this glowing, like, bluish, faint blue glow that is in a symbol. Do any of you read Abyssal? That are present right here? So Thaddeus, no. Soka, Vatan, and Zane. Nope. Okay. No. None of you would. None of you would recognize the language, nor recognize uh, what it says. Zane, oddly enough, after being hit by this glyph, you immediately know in your brain what what that glyph is. And in your brain, all the only thing you could think of is don't touch that chest, don't touch that chest, don't touch that chest. <laughs> what the hell happened? Do I see a glow when <laughs> I step in? As you step in, make a dexterity saving throw. 16. You fail. <laughs> you, fail. you take. I'm just going to. Crawl out of the way. Ooh. <laughs> As you watch Thaddeus jump in, you see this blue burst of energy. Uh, boy, uh, that is not great for Thaddeus. Um, and this is why I held on to a lot more spells until the evening. That's <laughs> uh, 15. Four. 32. You take 35 points of force damage. Shit. That's a seven, a seven, an eight, an eight, and a three on five D eight. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Damn. And you see, you get launched back ten feet out the door, uh, and <laughs> with that angle, both of you would have slammed pretty much at the at the foot of this large bookshelf that seems to be almost unnatural. Uh, and I forgot to mention, all these bookshelves seem to be unnaturally sturdy, where a flim where it looks like a flimsy bookshelf being that tall should not be able to be staying in in place without any seeming seeming anchor. You slam into it and that bookshelf does not move. Did any books fall down on me? Higher level, my, Todd. Hi. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. Seventy-two minus thirty-five. A a uh, that's eleven on the dice. Um, a uh, a large, a thick leather tome rattles from about ten feet above your head and smacks you in the top of the head. You take four points of more, four points more bludgeoning damage. <laughs> so that total of thirty nine. Thirty nine points of damage just for stepping in a room. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the library, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something important in that. That. You think you should really try it again? Okay. This this, this one will. <laughs> this one will help. Vatan, uh, you do. Uh, which I, I moved your token over. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna first drop a second level cure wounds into um, Thaddeus. <laughs> okay. Roll for that. I think he needs it. Looks like he okay, does. What's thirty? What's thirty nine minus seventy two minus thirty nine? Who's good at math? 
Uh, Google is good at math. Sorry, you said 73. 33. 33. And then add 15 back, so. Half your HP. Gone like that. (laughs) All because you stepped into a room. Wow. Uh, 15 back, I think. So you heal 15, so it's... It's not it's 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 a net twenty four damage. <laughs> um and then I will go ahead and drop a fourth level dispel magic on whatever the hell is in there. Fourth level? Roll a D twenty yep. and add your wisdom modifier. Uh, ooh, I'll take it. That's not it's within 120 feet. You reach out to dispel this uh this ward this glyph i'm gonna roll out of the way (laughs) and as you do it you immediately understand what this is as you go to dispel it you don't understand the bissel but you do understand that is a glyph some form of glyph that is a repulsion of some sort um, and it is meant. It is meant for once. Once activated, you guess that anybody within a five foot radius of it, uh, within an enclosed space, is launched backwards. Um, you wave your hand and start to decode this glyph, and then the blue dim light disappears, and it is now dispelled. I will do a. Uh very large after you um, to probably to Zane. <laughs> the what? Sorry? The glyph isn't I, glowing I, anymore. Yeah. And I do a, a big after you type of bow thing. I will go ahead and try the chest again. <laughs> okay. You Peeking my head around the corner. <laughs> you go to open up the chest, you, you flip the little uh, lock tab up, and the chest opens. No traps. What's in the box? <laughs> in it, you find what seem what seems to be a some sort of, like, burlap sack. Uh, and you kind of peek into it. It's a lot of gold inside there. Um, how much? If you're taking a guess, it'd probably be five, six thousand gold pieces. Ooh. Um, I'm gonna pocket that for myself. You're gonna grab the gold. Wow! I'm, we're, I'm peeking in there. You better do it with sleight of hand. All right, are you trying to do this sneakily? I, yes. <laughs> I, I am also watching. Roll so. <laughs> I need. You to roll sleight of hand, and you need to beat Vaten's pre- passive perception. Oh, God. <laughs> Good happen. luck. <laughs> oh, that was a really bad roll. Uh, eight. <laughs> Both of you see Zane very clearly heave this massive fucking burlap sack out of the out of the chest and, like, try to shove it in his bag of holding. <laughs> Zane, what have you got there? Zane. Uh, just a little baggie I can make him do another bag of holding, you know? Hey, Zane. Buddy. Yeah. Roll a wisdom saving throw. Eighteen. Eighteen. You feel a nauseous, another more almost similar to the energy that just blasted you out of the room, except the lighter. Um, and it sweeps over your head, and you feel it try to take hold of your consciousness, and you feel your blo- your vision go blurry just for a second. And you're able to shake it off. And you look around. You are now blind for the next hour. What the fuck? As you go to grab this sack of coins. It's all dark. All you see, all, all you see is shadows, and like you look around, you see like the silhouette of Thaddeus and the silhouette of Vatan and Elka all standing around. Hmm. We seem to have a problem, friends. Problem? I you... cannot see anything. Oh. Is that why you had a hard time putting that big thing in your pocket? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. This one would suggest you return that. I'll go ahead oh. and 
lesser restoration him. You can, In the other room, we probably should look through it. You can suddenly see again as he lesser restorations you. What's your passive perception, Zane? Uh, not that great. It's 11. 11, even that's why, uh, yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice it. Vaten, as you step in and kind of peek your head in, mm-hmm. you do see another glyph inside the room, and it's invisible. And it is now, it's still invisible, but you can see like a dim green light coming from right behind the chest. And This one would suggest returning that. And I'll point to the sack. But well, if there's a gem in it. As as you look down further in it, all you see is uh you see a what looks to be a half plate. Uh looks to be made out of some sort of silverish metal. Could be platinum, could be steel, um, could be mithril. Um you you see that, and then underneath it you do find a wand of some sort. That is underneath it. Um, but as you put... Th- are you going to put the gold back? It's in your hand now. Nope. <laughs> All right, you shove the... Okay. Uh, is that a pressure plate? All right. As you put the gold in your... Uh, you shirk off the uh, the blindness with the help of the Lesser Restoration from Vaten. And uh, you look around... You got to put the gold in, and as you put it into your bag of holding, you look down, and the burlap sack is gone. So you felt the weight of it going into your bag of holding, and then as you let go of it, instead of it disappearing down into the bag, the burlap sack is just gone. Interesting. Um, whether or not is it is in your bag of holding, you can check. Uh, Vaten. You do notice that green glyph now starting to go a little bit, a little bit brighter, and is no longer invisible. Insane. Hey. You see it as well, and it looks to be the, a glyph of like an eyeball. I will I'm just gonna... go ahead and yank Zane out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna back out of the room <laughs> willingly. I want that one. I don't this think it's one worth it. against that. Zane. Yes. Add 4,538 gold pieces to your inventory. Oh boy, I'm rich. <laughs> um, mind you, every single one of your friends pretty much just saw you put that in your bag of holding. But, you know, it's up to you. <laughs> I'll help them later with it. Okay. Um, so you're just going to walk out of this room then? Yep. All right. You walk out of this room, and as you take steps out, you see Vaten looking over your, looking behind uh, Zane's shoulder. You do see that green glyph start to disappear again and no longer glow. And you watch oh, it. You watch disappear. Okay. Yeah, it disappears on the wall. And then mm-hmm. you you watch the as the chest slams down by itself. I. Uh... Seeing it, could I activate the Extendo Spear and stop it from closing all the way? Make a dexterity check. But... Not bad. Not great, but not bad. It would be acrobatics, sorry. So if you have proficiency uh, in acrobatics. I do not. Okay. So it'd be a 60. Um, yep. I do. You go to sh- shoot your your extendo sphere out to stop it, and you're able to get it flat in there, but it slams on top of your spear. You're not quite fast enough to get it and twit and like get it to where it's wide enough to keep it open. But you do have your spear underneath the lid now. Um. I'll go ahead and checking for the first rune, the the send people bye bye rune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
that is still not glowing, correct? All you see now, now that it is not glowing, you just see a carved symbol inside the stone wall. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and... Um, with the spear... So essentially the spear is in there, but it's not enough that I like levered it open. Yeah, so you're... And with the attempt to try to keep it open, you'd keep the spear vertical instead mm -hmm. of flat. Uh, you realize as you're getting it right there, it's too late to keep it vertical, or you okay. you would just stab the you would just stab the chest. So in an attempt to, there's two different DCs for this. So you're able to get your spear underneath the lid, um, okay. and is flat underneath it currently. Um. Based on where I saw the rune, um, can I maneuver my spear in such a way that I would be able to, like, scratch it? Huh. So, what you're... So, you're trying to scratch the rune that is... It's just, just generally deface the rune, if possible. Uh, you'd have to pull your spear out. Uh, because the rune is behind the, the chest. Oh, it's behind the chest. Correct. Is that um, the one that was glowing? The, okay, so I don't know if I described this right. The rune that glue a the that glue a, a a dim blue light that blasted you guys out of the room is to the left of the chest on the wall, carved okay. into the stone. The one with the eyeball is on is behind the chest on the wall, not okay, on I the, it was in the not on the physical Got lid it. of the chest. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. I thought it was on the inside of the lid. Yeah, um, so did I. Okay, so in that case... Um, Would we have seen this other than Vuitton? Or, oh, but yeah. Vuitton? Yes. <laughs> Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Louis, huh? Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't have seen it when it, whenever it first started glowing after Zane was blinded, um, but you would have seen it once the chest started to close. So it's right now and currently, uh, currently it is now invisible again, but it is, uh, as the chest was closing, it was blowing, it was glowing a bright green, like eyeball on the wall behind it. But I would know like where that spot. Was. All of you would know exactly where it is. Yeah. But it is invisible to the naked eye right now. Would you like me to shoot it with an arrow or bolt? This one will try hold my spear please oh i'd love to hold your spear <laughs> um and then i will take my dagger <laughs> out see, i saw that look <laughs> <laughs> okay you're taking your I, dagger I will, yeah i will take my dagger and try to um kind of deface the rune that way okay um all right i'm going to need you to make so you're just trying to deface it. So you're trying to carve into the stone with a dagger. Um, just scrape it because that's it is. So even though the, the walls show wood, it, that's that's the very top of the wall. It's all stone. Oh, OK. In so it's a completely stone. Yes. Wall. Um, in that case, instead of with the dagger, I will. Um, I, I guess splash a. guess I'll go ahead and just splash a uh, produce flame on it and just chuck a f just just like, start to well yeah just, just just chuck one so pr is produce flame arranged or is it with is it just in your hand it's the range yeah oh okay um, so it, it technically it's in my hand but I can throw it gotcha okay you throw it um make a, a, a range spell attack is that what that was right there yep that 15 15 and you're hit, trying to hit a wall easy enough uh and you, you, you fling it you see the rune start to glow a bright green as you hit it mm -hmm. you get the sense it's reactionary to anything touching it or anything entering the room um although you do note that when you put your spear in the room it didn't glow okay I'll go ahead and summon Newton into the room. 
Okay. And see if he gets blinded. Okay. You summon your your uh wildfire spirit. Your wildfire spirit, your salamander into mm -hmm. the room. And we'll have a token for him. I feel like I do. There's yeah, there's one somewhere. Yeah, there it um, is. Nice. Yep. Uh Roll wisdom saving throw for Newton. <laughs> as the, as the as the glyph starts to glow. Uh, where is his? Uh oh, that didn't work. Um, one d twenty plus two. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Five. Is it? Does Newton have any? Uh, any? I don't know. If wildfire spirits have can be blinded, or can they? Uh, they they can be blinded. Okay. Um, so, charmed, charmed, frightened, grappled, prone, restrained are the things that it cannot God, be. I, I knew there was resistances and invulnerabilities. I didn't know if that was one of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Newton immediately pops up. Looks around, first time being summoned in, 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 in a hot second. And then all of a sudden, everything goes black. <laughs> and he's, com he's completely blind. <laughs> uh, I would just... If the rune is not glowing anymore, I would just go ahead and walk in myself and pop the chest open. <laughs> uh, the rune is still brightly glowing as he is in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, would acid help? Perhaps. Okay. I'll dismiss Newton. Okay. Newton just <laughs> had a flash of fire. <laughs> I, uh... Wait, I have a small jar. Oh, that's got venom in it. Um, in the room, is there anything that would hold... Is there a cup or is there... Oh, wait, there's a cup in the other room. I I need something that will hold acid. I mean, you have... You have those jars, you have the uh, alchemy jugs. Well, I know, I don't want to throw the whole damn jug, though. Okay. <laughs> um, My monitor just turned off. Please don't tell me you're dying now. <laughs> I think I'd bump I'm, it. I'm going to quick run into the other room and right here. Okay. Grab one of these cups. Okay. <laughs> you you climb you climb over multiple uh, refugee families and steal a cup off, off the table. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. That was your finger. Well, not much of it was left. Um, Jesus and then, Christ. Um, <laughs> I'm going to, from my alchemy jug, pour some acid into that cup and I'm going like Vatan Louis yes. Vatan would you like the honor of throwing it at the eye I hate that that's a thing <laughs> that this Louis? one is would probably you... <laughs> this one is probably less accurate than you are the throw is a dexterity based check so yeah yeah oh, that, that's, that's kind of like the perfect <laughs> rogue activity right there yeah, all right, did. I'm going to use all my rogueness, and it would it be a sleight of hand or no? It, uh, it, you're throwing it at the wall. It'd just be a um, roll your d20 and add your dexterity mod, uh, add your proficiency bonus in your dexterity modifier. Since you are fairly proficient with ranged stuff, I'd say by uh, now. Okay, so I I rolled a thirteen. On my dice. Okay. And what would my other bonuses be? Your proficiency bonus and your dexterity modifier. Proficiency Probably bonus plus is seven three, or eight. so that's sixteen. And then my dexterity bonus, you said? Yeah, so probably plus five by now. Uh my dexterity is twenty, so yes, that would plus be five. five. So <laughs> twenty one. Twenty one. You're throwing a, a cup at a wall. Yeah, it hits. 
the acid sprays out all over this glyph, and immediately you see the glyphs start to blink and rapidly try to make an arcana check for me, Vaten and Zane. Since you two are resident magic users in this group right now. Bad roll. Take that net uh, 20. 13. <laughs> you can you can sense this glyph is just rapid firing blindness spells. Oh shit. <laughs> as as the as the acid is is ripping in eating into the stone. Um Is it working? <laughs> it seems to be. <laughs> it's working. This one is not sure. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Oh damn it, sorry about your hand. I'm gonna grab that other rough mug. Oh your finger. Oh sorry. I'll be back. I'll send somebody over. I'm gonna repeat the process. Okay, roll another roll another Dex. It's essentially a dexterity save, is what it is, because that's that's your, if you're proficient. You're proficient yeah. in your dex save, yeah. Twenty-five. Yeah, you hit it. <laughs> or twenty-three, yeah. I'll go with your first roll because it technically wasn't with an advantage. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh twenty-three, yeah. You hit it and immediately the green light starts to blink faster and faster and faster, and all of you, the two magically inclined people in this group, start to realize Oh, this thing's piss. <laughs> like, if Do I need more? And to... eventually the acid seeps down into the cracks of the stone in the green light. Stops glowing. Now it is safe. I'm going for more. Oh, it's safe? Oh, can make a, oh, yeah. make a perception check for me. Hey, Louie. <laughs> uh, 11. Yeah, it's good enough. So, so Louis. That's that's not his name. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 so. <laughs> you see, you see a Rasalor start to walk around the corner, or or walk down through this. Sorry, walk down through this uh, stairs. <laughs> Beep! You gonna, you clock him right away. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna like elbow uh, Zane really quickly and like <laughs> motion that some that he's coming. I'm going. Oh. I'm, I'm pulling well, that my. Is thing that I'm going to distract. You're finally gonna, back. Oh, oh you my, uh, help us. His his hey, his arms have about three or four three or four tomes and then like three scrolls. I'm going to pull my cloak over my head when I hear her say somebody's coming. I'm going to slide into the room. Go invisible. Okay. Go invisible and then open the the chest and grab what the thing is and then step back outside. So inside the chest left. Uh, you find a, uh, a half plate, a piece of armor, and you find underneath it a wand. You are unaware of what this wand is, but it is a wooden wand with what seems to be an ivory handle. Okay, I'm going to, like, step out and... Oh. and... The other thing, roll... Actually, your passive perception is what? 14, you said? 16. Pass, 14, passive sorry, perception. 14. 14. Okay. Yeah. You notice a curious vial at the bottom. Oh, God. He doesn't need more vials. Um, you recognize this vial. Yeah. Oh, you look at it, and it is the very same glass vial filled with this weird, milky, almost like um, mercury-like liquid that um, that was given to you a few night, probably about a week and a half ago, prior to all of you going to Torben's castle by Torben. Um, you see this vial. And it's just sitting at the bottom of uh bottom of the chest. Oh, I'm grabbing that and I'm putting it in my little vial holder on my vest. Okay. You sh shove that in there. Rassler's just like, yes, I found I found so many and he starts to look over your shoulder and he sees the door opened <laughs> into that room. Oh, I see you found a hidden doorway. Uh, I hope all of you were careful. I don't even, I didn't even know that one existed. Yes, that's all right. 
Excuse me, excuse me. I'm sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> there wasn't anything of note in there, really. Just some books that looked like they were written by Leon. That journalistic more, perhaps, than actual reading material. It makes sense to me. Um... I'm unstealthy. <laughs> oh, w welcome back. Oh, hello. Um, good to see, good to, I hope the your time in the library has been fruitful. Um, that man's yes. hand isn't, but... Unfortunately, there's quite a few people who are afflicted with that type of wound. Um, if you don't mind me, let me, let me look in. Uh, as he steps in, he's going to see the acid-pitted stone. I see you took care of... And he sees, like, the, the glyph that's drawn. Did you take care of the glyphs that were inside this room? Yes. We did. Interesting. And he'll look right at you, Zane. Are you sure books are the only thing you found? Yes. Roll deception check. <laughs> oh, what is my deception here? Okay, there it is. You're rolling against his insight. What he roll? Uh, thirty. Well, I ain't beating that. <laughs> I don't even. I don't have anything that can even roll that high. He looks at. Uh huh. He just takes the deepest of breaths. Very well. And he'll just grab his books, his tomes, and his scrolls, and follow me. And he will guide all of you over to Oh yeah, no he Yeah. I mean his yeah. his, <laughs> his his ins his insight is his insight is a plus thirteen. So Yeah, no, I can't uh, beat him at that because I can only roll at highest of twenty eight yeah. and not with deception. Yeah. <laughs> so he just kinda Uh huh. And I mean, I rolled, I rolled a three too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So he clearly guesses that you found something in there, and he probably guesses it was something of value. But the books are a little bit more important to him right now. The mission at hand, <laughs> other than punishing some ragtag adventurers for stealing from his boss. <laughs> Fine. He's in a coma. He doesn't need it right now. Kind of true. <laughs> um, he walks over. I don't know if any of you can learn can read Dwarvish or Celestial. Um, oh, I can. There's one book. Or there's one scroll here that's written in a hodgepodge of Dwarvish, Elvish, and Sylvan. Um, I can read it. Not Sylvan. Um, you should be able to read all of that. Uh, let's see. Uh, he hands... You can read Dwarvish, Elvish, and Silvish? And Silvish, Sylvan? Uh, Silvish, yes. Silvish. Yes, that's my home area. He'll hand you a scroll, and it's a piece of parchment that is a little, like, like a wax ceiling on it. Um, I resealed it, because this is quite old. Be very careful. Um, he'll hand that to you. Um, How to make a man look like a frog? Can anybody read Celestial? I think the only one here who can is maybe not paying attention. Who would that be? Not that. Well, this is Jake? out of character. Oh. oh, yeah. Austin, are you here? <laughs> I I think he said earlier that he uh, needed to duck out for a while. Gotcha. Beep, beep, beep. beep. That's beep, beep, fine. Beep, beep, beep. Understood. And he'll hand, uh, he'll hand the celestial scroll to beep. <laughs> That's what you get for picking up a cat. You get, you get claws right in the neck. <laughs> um. <laughs> but uh, he'll look at all of you. Okay. Here's one in common. Um, and he'll hand a book to someone. I'll take it. Here you go. Uh, I'll keep this one, and it, you see it's a book 
Thaddeus, you uh, you glance up. It is very clearly an Elvish, the book he has in his hand. Anybody else who okay. reads Elvish recognize it as Elvish. And then the last one, and he, one of the tomes. It's another skinnier book. I had to dispel this one. Um, you start to look at him a little bit more. His fine green and gold robes that were once neatly pressed uh, seem to have some char marks on them. Uh, and his hair seems to be a little bit messier than than it normally is, uh, or a little bit messier than than it was. I had to deal with some things down there. Um, Shocking. Uh, anybody know how to read Draconic? These ones do, and I'll point to myself and Elka. Uh, and he'll hand you a tome, a smaller tome, that is in Draconic. Uh, all of these pertain to either a Cordeorum or potentially any history about them. Uh, these are in the restricted section, and it took. I mean, I I don't know how long I was down there. How long was I down here for you guys? A while. It's been 87 years. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> really? Like, God, no. I'm Elvish, or you, we'd all be dead. Just kidding. <sighs> Ah well, you know, time moves differently in this in in this in this library, and I was down there for three days. What? <laughs> so, uh, how much time was passed up here? It's only been a day. Um, if that, not, not even. Four Matter of hours. Was three days ago. That explains it. I'm trying to <laughs> understand how time moves down there. So, how many? Time is the soup. And he'll, just, soup. he'll just he'll just soup. Oh, if did, it, did it smell like herbs down there? Moss, yes. That, that, that could explain it. The the calendar was four twenty three days ago, so <laughs> that might have explained your loss of time. <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying, and I'm just going to ignore it. I uh, think you are hitting the wizard's herbs. Oh, those herbs. <laughs> Only occasionally. Wow. Uh, <laughs> you look at all of you. Seriously, though, how much time has passed? Like half a day. Okay. That's not as bad as I thought. Don't wander down there without permission. I know you... I know it said you have full reign of the library, but... There's some things down there that... Even I wasn't prepared to deal with. Now I want to go down there. Well, if you want to spend time down there, just know that time moves much faster down there, and there's things down there that... Oh, well, I'll just put it mildly. I had to destroy a few mage hunter golems. Um... Those are fun. Uh, yeah. Especially for someone who's magically inclined like myself. Uh, that took some time. But I'm here. I found these. Um, please read through them. And uh, I'll read through this one. And uh, he'll sit down and just look f fucking tired. <laughs> and start to read through his book. Um, we'll go with the scrolls first. Um, Thaddeus, you go to start to read through through this scroll, and it is first-hand accounts of times a court diorum was seen and used to help aid societies come back from plagues. And a what a what was used? A court diorum is the gem you're looking for. Oh, okay. Um, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise known as the heart of the gods. Um. This is interesting, folks. You start to read about how during the fracture, the first wave of the fractures, and you start to read and you realize that the fracture wasn't just a single event. Like some people may think it wasn't just something that happened over a span of the week of a week. This happened over a span of a hundred 
or so years. Um, in the first wave of the fracture, you read that a deity, one of the uh, one of the founder gods, um, dubbed the Plague Bringer, also known as the god of tyranny and illness, Bane, um, brought a onslaught of plague and death that swept across the known world uh, at, during the beginning of the fracture. And these gems, although history is boggled about when they were made, according to this scroll, the gems were in existence during the fracture. Um, and they were used to aid in bringing multiple cities and towns out of plagues brought by this god. Uh, you also read a dwarvish account of this gem being offered up by its creator, um, Osnit Enburn, um, to basically uh, use one of the gems to bring a god back to life. Um, specifically, the god that had been slayed is one of the founding gods of the dwarves. The Iron Father, Gond. Uh, it's stated that uh, the uh, another one of the um, founder gods, Bashaba, the curse giver, uh, beheaded Gond during one of their battles. And Gond was brought to... Uh, the body of Gond was brought to Osnit to basically bring him back to life. Um, and these are multiple accounts of, uh, of, of these gems throughout on the scroll. And there's about five or six different sections on this scroll as you read that account of it curing plagues and bringing people back to life and regrowing regrowing limbs. How do you spell god? God is G O N D. God, the Iron Father. All right. Thank you. Mhm. Mm um this is very interesting. But that's all you can really learn from that scroll. It is you're starting to see the repeating the repeating notion that these gems are used to heal primarily um so group just my quick rick um overcount of this is that the gem was used multiple times by the dwarves to heal um it actually healed one of their founding fathers um Gound, who was beheaded by Base Breshgard, or something like that, during the times of the plague, before the actual, evidently the fracture was multiple, not one event, but a long, long event of several events. You just see Beep kind of like making like a, like a frustrated... Like uh, rubbing his rubbing his fingers to his no the brim of his nose as you read names of gods, completely wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry that I missed that master of the beep, but you just you you just notice him off to the side, just kind of smiling and doing that. Um, okay, but that's your scroll. Uh, the other people I ran the scrolls to were, oh boy. Oh, he handed mm -hmm. the scroll to Beep in Celestial. Mm -hmm. I don't think Austin is here. Uh, so Beep will read it, and he'll just say... Doesn't Mousy read Celestial? No. Oh, okay. Mousy reads yep. Sylvan and Draconic, I think is the... Oh, Draconic. I I'm think. Sorry. Yeah, I and think... And Goblin. And Go Elka knows Goblin. I did not know this. <laughs> Alara knows Goblin. <laughs> Yeah. You could just have girl she talk. Is the goblin. You could just have girl talk and goblin. Yep. Yeah. I'll, I'll braid her hair while we talk in goblin. And it just sounds like, but just so you know, goblin absolutely sounds just like a bunch of screeches and clicks. 
<laughs> it's a screaming bunny braiding hair. Yeah. Just me no. screaming about cheese. <laughs> Just makes me think of like oh, the two like little mice Pokemon from Scarlet and Violet with their mouths wide open screeching. <laughs> it's, it's, it's essentially what it is, yeah. Um, but Beep just kind of looks around, reads his, reads oh, his, hi. oh, hi. <laughs> oh, he's back. He's alive. Uh, yeah, drinking four glasses may have been a bad choice. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I said this when you were on, on glass three, buddy. Yeah, I'm okay. Are you Welcome sure? Welcome back, Todd. I mean. No, Austin, I'm being serious. <laughs> As your friend, are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Okay. I'm just like straight Todd. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> that that took an unexpected turn. I mean, like fair, I guess. <laughs> Austin, um, I love you. Not everyone loves way. me. I, I'm amazing. I know. Austin, beep. Yeah, you're handed a scroll that is in Celestial. Ooh. Um, the scroll has an account in Celestial ab about you. Make a religion check for me, please. All right. Sixteen. You feel a very similar energy coming off the scroll that was similar to when you climbed the world tree down in Ushar. The same energy that surrounded you in your youth as you climb too high. But as you read, you get the sense that this scroll was either written by a god themselves or a very powerful acolyte of one of the gods. Um, as you read it, you read of a first-hand account of, a Corday, of the Corday Orm being created and how Eldath, the Peace Bringer, imbued her own, basically, life force into these gems. And you read that not only were there five that were created, but there's a sixth. Ooh. That Osnit, the creator himself, made specifically for his own home. And you would read that the sixth was considered a failure to Osnit because the gem itself that he chose to imbue with this power uh, couldn't handle it as well as the other gems he had, he had selected and created himself. Um, you'd also read that these gems were originally designed and created to be aids in destroying um, the aversers, the destroyers. Um, you would also read that the gems are basically a pure, uh, basically a divine energy in its purest form that is crystallized. Um, but you read all that and, uh, everybody else is just kind of dug in to reading something right now as you look up. It's not that long of a scroll, um, but it does feel like it is literally a firsthand account from a god if, if there could be one. All right. So I'm going to have, um, I imagine there's empty, um, paper nearby or like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Virus yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Beep is just going to translate it all into common. Okay. Um, Beep does that. I have part of those writings. I will finish those, and then I will share this piece of parchment. I'll share all these scrolls with you guys. Uh, I assume... Let me just assume for the scrolls. Um, Todd... Or Thaddeus, what Thaddeus tried to uh, translate and decipher and put on a piece of paper himself and into comments so everybody would be able to read it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to say it would take some time. Next session, I will provide all of those to you. So you'll have them, you'll be able to read them, and there'll be field notes for you, so that way you can refer back to it. Um, oh, in the book that hit me on the head, mm -hmm. and did, I threw that in. I don't know what it was, but I threw that in my book of, or my bag of holding. Okay, I mean, you can take a look at it if you want, but while everybody else is reading. And... Well, I, I will look at it after you get through everybody else. Okay, sounds good. Um, all right, so a a dracon a, a short a smaller book written in draconic was handed to both Va was handed to Vaten and Elka. All of you read through it, both of you read through it, and it's tales from a draconic tribe that lived in the Black Run Forest prior to the fracture. Um and it talks about a first-hand account of the master craftsman Osnit Emburn coming down from the mountains of, of Arendur, or coming down from the keep of Arendur, and bringing his own personal gem to help aid in a sickness that had swept across this draconic tribe, his dragonborns. Um that had essentially made their scale start to shed rapidly. And he came down and started healing and curing, curing those of this curse or illness um, with this, with this tiny little, they describe it as a, as a gem of, as a plain clear gem of opalescent shine and shimmer. At, at its face value. As it's being used, a bright golden ray shines from this gem as it is touched upon someone who is ill. Um, there's one more account in there, and it's of a village chief, and it's labeled um, as that of a village chief, and it's, uh, it's labeled, uh, his name is... Looking, looking, that's his name. Uh, his name is Tothgar. And it's the only name he gives. And he is labeled as the village chieftain of another Draconic tribe. That is that is loosely... It's kind of loose in seeing if this is from the same tribe that was inflicted with this, this curse. Or if it was a different one. Um, but it is a first-hand account of a... Uh, of a elven man um, that basically had what seemed to be the very same gem that Osnet brought all those years ago uh, in his possession and it seemed like he was a well-known smuggler of sorts um, and uh, he provided the name of said person as Zach scrolls down his list of bullshit. Um, he's known as Aaron, A-R-I-N, of Tyward. T-Y-W-A-R-D. Uh, First-hand account of this elvish man seemed to be dressed more like a thief or a rogue, beelining through the mountains, desperately trying to hide. And in his possession, in a chain that is hanging around his neck, is this very same gem that was accounted in the prior story. Um, it would also state that this happened somewhere within the Rania Trench. And there is no date time, no date stamp for this. But you read through that. Um, while, um, while Elka and I are reading this, um, in Draconic, um, I'm just gonna ask, um, how is your scale? What? This one saw several nights ago. At the Ronas. Oh, 
wait, this is in Draconic, so I can actually use proper grammar. Um, I saw when we were at the Ronas the the scale that you had found on your elbow. I haven't really thought about it. I'll like pull my arm up and like look at it again. I'll kind of try to screen from everybody else. Where there was once one scale, there's now three. Ah! Uh, I seem to be growing more. Are you worried? Uh, no. There's dragon blood in, in my family, but I, I don't know of any of us that have had scales, but... I'm also the only one without magic, so. I just smile and, uh, you get used to scales <laughs> and then go back to, to reading. Okay. I'm going to pull my sleeve back down over my scales. Um, Vaten, you do notice Rosalor kind of glancing over at all, both of you. Um, I will With shoot him. Crazy I, I will shoot him a very dirty look. Um, you'll hear as he notices that he'll see him look back down at his book very quickly, and you'll hear in your head, in Draconic. Mm -hmm. I, I meant no harm. I was just curious. I'll keep it a secret. You she does not wish anyone to know this one, or Draconic still. I may have violated her trust by both discovering and asking about it. Then a secret it will stay. Thank you. And he'll go back to reading his book as if nothing happened. Yep. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Uh, so as you go read through that, Zane, book book in common. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's a pretty interesting book. Uh, in fact, it is a you look at it and scratched out on the on the leather binding, you see the name Lilac again, and then you see Volume One, and you gather that this is the Tales of Lilac the Bard, Volume One. And as you open up this book, the first story inside this book is labeled Osnit the Gemsmith. You read, and it, again, I have a full fucking book for you if you want it. Um, uh, you read, essentially, how... Uh, yeah, fuck it. We're going to read the book here. It's only like 10 paragraphs. Oh, God. Are are we doing this and then wrapping up? I might bail yeah, we if that's can, the case. We can, we can wrap up after that, yeah. All right, yeah. I might just bail um, on this because I have to get up super early tomorrow. Okay. So. Um, well, I'll be providing... Uh... I'll be providing the full list of stuff to you guys that you've read. Um, but it reads. Ten. If you want to bail, you can. That's fine. Yeah, cool. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. Have a good one, all. Yeah, you too. Um, it reads, In a land far, far away, there once lived a great dwarven master craftsman named Osnit M. Byrne. Osnit was known throughout the land for his skill in crafting beautiful and magical gems. But one of his greatest creations was a gem called a Cordeorum. The, Corde the Cordeorum was a small gemstone that shone with a brilliant opalescent light. Imbued with the life force of the Peacebringer, Eldath, it was said that the gem had the power to heal all wounds, cure all illnesses, and even bring people back from the dead. Osnit had crafted five of these gems for the five Dwarven Lords, and one for himself. One day... A great plague swept across the land, and many people fell ill. The king of the land was desperate to find a cure and promised great riches to anyone who could save his people. Hearing of the king's offer, a brave adventurer named Rorin set out to find one of the legendary Cordeorum gems. 
Roran traveled far and wide, battling dangerous creatures and braving treacherous terrain. After many long weeks, he finally reached Osnit's workshop, deep within a mountain. The dwarven craftsman welcomed Roran warmly and, short and showed him the five Cordaeorum gems he had crafted and set aside for the five dwarven lords. Roran knew that he could not take all of the gems, so he asked Osnit which one was the most powerful. Osnit laughed and said all of them were the same. Osnit then handed Roran a gem that was that was not one of the five state uh, that was not one of the five, stating that those gems belonged to the five dwarven lords. The gem bestowed to Roran was a smaller gem, a gem of great beauty, uh, yet fragile design. Roran, frustrated with the old dwarf, proclaimed that such a fragile gem would simply turn to dust if transported all the way back to his kingdom. Osnit laughed again and simply said, Watch this. It is said that Osnit took up a battle axe and chopped off his own hand, right in front of Roran. Roran, too shocked to speak, watched in awe as Osnit took the gem and put the tiny rock into his severed hand. His hand then proceeded to reattach itself to Osnit's arm. Roran profusely apologized and quickly accepted the gem from Osnit. With the precious gem in hand, Roran returned to the kingdom and presented it to the king. The king was overjoyed and immediately ordered his healers to use the gem's power to cure the sick and dying. The Corday Orum proved to be just as powerful as Osnit had claimed. It healed the sick, cured the dying, and brought hope to the people of the kingdom. Roran was hailed as a hero, and the king rewarded him with a great riches and honors. From that day forward, the Corday Orum was treasured by the people of the land, and it was passed down from generation to generation. The gem became a symbol of hope and healing, and even to this day, People tell tales of its power and wonder. You flip the page. And it's it's labeled Aaron the Fool. And it reads, As time went on, the Corday Orum became more and more revered throughout the land. It was kept under lock and key in the king's treasure vault guarded day and night by the finest soldiers in the kingdom. But one fateful night, disaster struck. A group of thieves, led by the cunning rogue named Aaron of Tyward, broke into the treasure vault and stole the Corde Orum for himself. The king was furious and ordered his soldiers to find the thieves and bring them to justice. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months, but there was no sign of the Corde Orum. The king's healers struggled to keep up the, with the demands of the sick and dying, and the people of the kingdom began to lose hope. Meanwhile, Aaron and his, band of, and his band of thieves fled the kingdom and were now hiding out in a remote mountain cave surrounded by sand. They had heard rumors of the gem's power and were convinced that they, that they could sell it for a great fortune. But as, as they examined the gem more closely, they realized that they could not unlock its secrets. The Cordarum was not just some gemstone. It was a powerful artifact imbued with ancient magic and celestial magic that could only be unlocked by someone that is worthy. And so Aaron and his band of thieves were forced to abandon the gem, leaving it behind in the mountain cave to be lost to history. Years turned into decades, and decades turned, in, turned into centuries. The Corde de Orum became nothing more than a legend. Many searched for the gem, but none could find it. To this day, no one knows what happened to Osnit's sixth gem. End story. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, as Rosalor kind of looks around, I think I may know where to look first. You tell. This book that I'm reading was written in the Elvria Forest. Um, and apparently it came from one of the dwarves that used to live in Elon, the elvish kingdom that sits in the Onokaris Mountains, just, well... A good two, three hundred miles south of Arandur. This one states 
a tale of them traveling through the trench. All they said was the Great Trench. And finding a cave that was guarded fiercely by multiple monsters. And they said that they saw a curious gold glow coming out of the cave. They don't really go into detail where this is, but the only trench I can think of is the Rania Trench. And that's a good couple hundred miles north of us. Um, it's a lead. Um, it's a start. And re hearing everything that all of you have said about your findings could be the same cave. A cave surrounded by sand is curious. The Rania Trench is a desert landscape. Could be something. Indeed. I also found a book, and he'll grab another another book that he had underneath it, and it, it's a pretty small journal. It's like almost like a personal journal. I have a the journal of one of the first Dwarven Lords. One of the five. And his name uh, Zach goes and checks his other PDF. Um, his name is Gregor Nolik. Um, he Apparently, he he's the he was the first lord of one of the one of the dwarven keeps in Valencia. Uh, uh, Fuithrandir, I think, is what this translates to. Um, it seems like it sits this keep sits somewhere north of the Tanglewood Forest, but. He speaks of a marvelous gem that was gifted to him from a master craftsman, but he doesn't name it. That could be another lead. Certainly an option. There's, cer there's also certainly a precedent in folklore that these things actually existed. Based on the first book that I read... This is directly related to the five dwarven legends of history that is this tying in correctly? Am I perceiving this correct? Well, if we combine all the stories that, that I found and that you all have read, along with any findings that you have potentially found in the main library area, it seems that the Corday Orum were made before the fracture and, and and or during the fracture to heal. And maybe those gems were eventually gifted to the five Dwarven Lords. Now to that's this is why the complete lack of history during the fracture and before the fracture is Really frustrating because we all we get is eyewitness accounts and guesses. Um, maybe the five dwarven lords were the ones that were spoke about in that uh, in that folklore book, or maybe they're someone completely different and they were diff dwarven lords of different ages. But all I know is. According to these tales, these existed. I mean, my storybook was quite clear. It was five brothers. This would be cognitive. I don't know if that's the right word. Cohesive. It would match the story, basically. And I agree. I think that's... Uh oh Well, we do know where all the five great... Dwarven keeps are. Those are well known. Um, in fact, some of the some of the keeps and some of the kingdom well, they're cities. They're called keeps, but they're cities in stone, cities and mountains. Uh, 
that the dwarves just kind of uh, hid away in during the fracture. Most of the dwarves weren't affected by it because they didn't have a need to come above ground. They only helped when it was needed, I guess, according to these stories. But, I mean, the closest dwarven keep to us is Iron Door, and it's north of the Rania Trench. That's a good place to start. Maybe the king can somehow get you entry into the kingdom there. It is ran by oligarchs, so I don't know how long that process would take, but that would be an option. I also don't know how we'd get a letter out to whoever's in charge there. I don't... I'm, I've never been there myself. I could teleport you there if... We want to be risky. Part of me is thinking this six gem might be the easiest to look for. Uh, we should probably hit up the trench, don't you think? It's the closest. Oh, I could teleport you to the trench. You know, well, I... we have a way there. Right. I, well, do I have access to a circle? And he starts to think. This is also Zach trying to th think if there's a magic circle that he has access to over there. Well, we can take the airship, which is, it should be about ready. Without... Uh, I could probably take you to... I could take you to Monmouth, which is on an island, but it's close... But you'd have to find a way to get across the ocean. You also said you wanted to go find help. You had a friend. Yes. You had a friend in Keister. You said that could help you. Indeed. So, I'm just I'm trying to figure out, trying to figure out a way to get all of you out of the city, without having to deal with dragons. Oh, we can manage. And as, as this is happening, you hear the doors burst open. And walking in is Ander. <laughs> covered head to toe in just crimson blood. He just walks in, looks at everybody. It's been a busy day. <laughs> How are you guys? Uh, it's been fruitful. You have to be better than you? Oh, I'm perfectly fine. And he, you see him reach down into his bag of holding and he pulls out a full ass adult dragon, blue dragon head. They said they're paying. They said they're paying for dragons. Indeed, they did. Uh, that's all I'm saying. I like, listen, I, I and then he pulls out, a, he pulls out what looks like a young dragon head. I, I got that one. Uh, I think this one is the one that I need to share with Ori because it was already beat to hell whenever I found it. Um, and then he pulls out a, uh, uh, he pulls out what looks like an ancient dragon, blue dragon's head. He's like, I can't take credit for this one. It was already dead. But I did cut off the head, so shh. And then he looks at Rosalor. Don't you say a word. <laughs> Rosalor just kind of looks. Your secret is safe with me. Actually, you're kind of the man that... And he, you see Rosalor kind of, like, wave his hand and press the digitate as much blood <laughs> off, of, off of Ander as he can. You're kind of the man that we were about to... I was about to ask about. Have you had any word about your ship? Oh. <laughs> ship. Um, yeah, so the guys did get a hold of me. Um, they are currently uh, not anywhere close. Um, they had to take it all the way down to... I think they said Ak Ak Akbington, it's basically south of the Haverlow Mountains. Uh, so that's that Wall City. Um, this is Zach trying to find the map and remember what the, what the fucking spelling is on it. Uh, here we go. Yes, uh, Arbington. Sorry, I couldn't tell if it was a K or an R from that far out. Um, they're in Arbington. Uh, by the looks of it, and that was the closest skyship port that they could find. 
Um, currently, repairs are being made. Uh, they did tell me that there wasn't any destruction past Vogas. Um, but they did say that Iodana and Kinyard are destroyed. And Rosalor just kind of looks. Well, that's. At least they stopped at Kinyard and didn't go after our crops in Norwich and Yarrowford and Yarrowford, but. Well, that's also a problem. Apparently, there's younger wormlings uh, causing havoc in Norwich right now. Um, the only reason they know that is because they saw a flock of them fly while they were flying past. They can only assume they're causing issues. Um, but they didn't bother to check because they're dealing with a half-broken skyship. Um, so... We That's going to be need that sky ship. Well, it's going to be it's going to be in Arbington for another few days. Um hey Rossi, uh don't you know how to teleport and shit? Can't you just teleport us to Arbington? I can. Um in fact, I have access to a circle there at the library there. Um we could go if all of you want to. We don't have to do it today, obviously. The king said you could stay here as long as you need, but... I know you said that you may need to stop in Keister, but you can always just head north from Arvington and a skyship and be in Keister in a day and a half. But at the very least, you don't have to sneak out of the city away from dragons. Unless you want to fight dragons. Clearly, Ander fought some. But... It's up to you. Uh, the, I have the spell ready. I can, I can draw a circle at any time and take you wherever you need to go as long as I have access. Or it could randomly teleport us, which could put us in a mountainside if we're not careful. I think we should hold off at least another night. I think we have some healing up to do. Very well. Um, well, we have... Um, I see that all of you have started scribing into common on pieces of paper. I will do the same for the for the books I read, and I also uh, saying you can just keep that book. All right. Um, that seemed to be helpful. Um, and you may you may get a may get a kick out of some of the stories inside that book. Um, it's good reading. A little bit old, but it's good reading. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you guys are, uh, ready, we can go back down below. And at this point, it's starting to get close to, like, five or six o'clock at night. Just a very long day of studying and reading and information gathering. Uh, Vaten, did you want to use... Oh, wait, he's not here. Uh, I'm going to say Vaten is going to go around and cure wounds, whoever he needs to. Um, now that he realizes that everything is calming down. Um... Well, uh, you need to clean off and he'll, uh, Rosler will take a jet of water and just splash the fuck out of Ander. Hey, uh, hello. I'm gonna raise my hand. I'm kind of got my ass kicked. Oh, are, are, uh, are you okay? Um, alive, but I could... <laughs> Well, well, let's just say I'm about three quarters, maybe two thirds of my abilities. Well, unfortunately, I'm not a healer. I'm just a magic user. Um, you could go find your uh, your healing friend. And at this point, Vaten's walking back, like wiping his hands off. And you look at you, realize that you're still still kind of look like shit, and so does Zane. <laughs> And he'll walk up and dump his last two third level spell slots into each of you for a third level cure wounds, um, which I will throw that up now. I just got to find it. Cure wounds at third level. This is for Z this is for Zane. 
Um, 24 points of healing for Zane. And uh, this is for... Thaddeus. Third level. Bam. Also 24 points of healing for you. So, uh... He kind of smirks at all of you, and then Rosalor juts the water back Whoa. up into the water sphere. Down you go. Time for a good, good, uh, good night's rest. And if you guys want to travel to Arbington tomorrow morning, we can. But or if you want to sneak out of Artemis, by all means, you can walk. But the spell is available to you. And he. Guides all of you down. You walk down into the famili semi familiar hideout basement cellar of the Royal Library. And as all of you go down to relax for the night, we'll end it there. Um, let's see here. All of you get a long rest, so make sure you mark all of that. And. Which I will do for... I wish there was a button that just said long rest for... Oh, there is. Wow, look at that. There's a button for long rest and... Wow, there is. In roll 20, who knew? Um. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Alright, uh, well thanks for playing. I'll be right back. Alrighty, friends. There, that one. All right, it's gonna do it. Thank you for hanging out. Um, yeah, I realize my cam froze. That's my bad. But thank you for hanging out. I appreciate all of you. Um, we're gonna be uh, back on it next weekend sunday um i will be yeah i should be fine i do have stuff to do saturday i don't know if i'm gonna be staying the night at my aunt's house um but if i do then i should be back in time so shouldn't be any issues there um but we are coming up on some dates where i will have to take off i did get uh, the official date for that i will be gone um pretty much the entire last um there will be no tales of amriel on i believe it's the 21st or the 28th of may um i will be up north in the great state of wisconsin at a wedding so i i will not have internet nor will i have my setup to do any of that stuff but thank you for watching i'll catch you guys next sunday where we will continue the story and hopefully uh find out what's next so have a wonderful night. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye-bye.